So in a previous episode, I was out for a hike and I stumbled upon all these trenches at Zigzag all over the place and they went on for kilometers and also these decaying flumes and I couldn't make any sense of it why it was there. With the help of the Invermere Museum, uh, I've cracked the case. So back in the early 1900s, they divided all this land up into lots and they built these irrigation canals that zigzagged all over the place because they were trying to hit every single lot and uh, provide them with water. They were calling it the Columbia Valley Irrigated Fruit Lands. They were trying to sell it to settlers as a promised land to come here, uh, set up life, do some farming. But I think when uh, people arrived in the area, they saw how rugged the landscape was and just how unreliable your water source was. It was a really hard sell. So ultimately, uh, the company setting it all up went bankrupt and the, the project was abandoned. Even to this day, uh, a lot of this land is still vacant. Uh, Crown land I actually slept here last night. But I've heard that there's a big trestle hidden in the forest somewhere around here. The locals are kind of secretive about the location because they don't want a lot of uh, tourists in the area. But with the help of this map, I've uh, narrowed it down to a few spots. So I'll see if I can find it. And uh, if I do, I'll try to be uh, kind of vague about the location. Step one is to uh, find the trench and then I can just trace that to where the trestle might be. So I found a section of it just up here. Once I start walking along it, I'll turn on my GPS tracking and uh, then we can line up where we are in accordance to that map. This is more fun than just being told where to go, isn't it? <laughs> I brought my bear spray. There's quite a few black bears in the area. This looks like a smaller size canal, so maybe just one of the offshoots. but might lead us to one of the main channels. You can see the size of the trees just growing out of it now. I lost it really quickly in this direction. I don't see any uh, trestle debris down this hill. Let's try the other way. It's amazing how they contoured it along all the hillsides and kept it at a steady elevation so that it'd all just be gravity powered. So yeah, this led me right to the main channel. I know where I am on that uh, map now. If I go left, there's a trestle there. But there's supposed to be a bigger one in this direction, so let's go see. So here we are. This would have been a very big trestle, and it's all collapsed. I don't think this is the one I was looking for. Got to be very careful. It's all full of rusty nails, so we'll try to walk along the outside of it. All right, well, we can scratch this one off the list. Let's go back the other way and see what's there. Okay, so I just passed the junction. Let's see what we have up here. Yeah, this is, this is definitely it. This is the one that people were talking about. Yeah, who knows what kind of historical stuff you'll find hidden out in the forest. This thing is huge. They should uh, redo the deck on it. That'd be a fun mountain bike trail. It's really hard to imagine the sheer amount of work that would have went into building all this. And it seems like some kind of Howard Hughes Disneyland type idea. It would have been partially functional. People bought land out here. Would have been a sight to behold. It's funny how uh, just stumbling upon a couple little trenches has uh, just led me one thing to another, all this history out here. I'm following it in the opposite direction now. There's supposed to be another pretty big uh, flume in this direction, so let's take a look. Right up around this curve, there should be something here. So this is different once again. There's a concrete structure there. Then the trench continues downhill. And there's all these metal rings in the trench. I've seen this before in uh, Beverage, Death Valley. Uh, I think they use wood planks and they lash it together with that metal. Yeah, look at this. There's actually some intact pipe here on the other side. More up there. This trestle is not nearly high enough to bridge this valley evenly. There would have been a big dip in the middle. So maybe there's just enough water pressure to push it all through. 
You can see how there's a divot cut out up there where the pipe would have sat in. It's starting to make sense now. This side is way higher than the other side, so it still would have worked on gravity to push all the water through that pipe. So I think that's the end of all the interesting flumes and trestles and pipes and things. The canal just kind of meanders all over the place as it reaches the point of diversion on Wilmer Creek. So I'm going to head over to that. I'm curious to see if there's anything there. It's about a three kilometer walk. My shoes are in rough shape every day. Rocco chews another chunk off them, but I think I can handle it. As I get closer to the creek, the trench just keeps getting deeper. They cleared all the trees out of it. It would make a nice bike trail because it's all level. Looks like they've cut a lot of dirt bike trails through here though. I feel like this has potential. This could be the final piece that connects onto the creek. Or actually the first piece of the puzzle, whichever the way you look at it. So this looks like it could be it, where they connected onto uh, Wilmer Creek. This is where it all began. Uh, the trail continues up and this almost looks man-made. Could this actually be a functional piece of the canal? Wouldn't that just knock your socks right off? I feel like I've walked far enough today. I'm going to start heading back to the van. I've marked a waypoint on my map so I can come back and check this out another time. There's a roads right behind me that I can drive to. But this really does look man-made so the investigation will continue. So there you go, some local history here in the Kootenays. There's probably a lot more to be discovered. I remember uh, when I was up in Kindersley for Crook and Shyster, uh, there's a flume there on this big trestle system. I think that one is over 100 years old and still in operation to this day. And I also remember when I was down near Canal Flats, uh, seeing the trenches dug out there too. So I guess the key is to find more of those historical maps and we can uh, uncover more stuff hidden out there in the forest. But I think that's uh, the end of this episode. So thanks for watching and thank you to Patreon supporters. And I'll see you in the next one.